remember that they are changing my voice so in the last video when I was discussing Hebrews 1 I, I have proven definitively that I am set apart as Christ using Hebrews 1 verse 13 so those who accept the mark of being idolaters and rebels reject my universal justice argument they reject my universal pinpointing moral precision argument they reject focus moral intensity as conveyance of the righteous spirit of God from God at the highest level as being set apart they reject Proverbs 16 12 where it says the throne is established through righteousness right through righteousness that transcends other people's attempts right which means the most intense righteousness which means focused righteous intensity they reject that no brain uh, interpretation of Proverbs 16 12 there's no other way to look at it but they're lying because they don't have the heart to obey God and we'll get into that in later Hebrews chapters where it talks about their hearts leading them astray and them hardening their hearts this video is about Hebrews 2 it says warning to pay attention so Hebrews 1 ends in 14 verses right okay say so there's 14 verses total Verse 13 says, To which of the angels did God ever say, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? In verse 14 it says, Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? Okay, so it then goes to Hebrews 2, where it says that these, you know, after it says these angels are, are uh, subservient to the one God set apart as the, the martially powerful one, right? Powerful in, in monotheistic martial arts, true power, true martial power. Martial is marital scramble, and Christ is the bridegroom, what have you. So then we get to Hebrews 2, where it says, warning to pay attention. Warning to pay attention. It says, it didn't just say that. It's saying, pay attention to that idea. We must pay careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment. And in the Hebrews 1, it was talking about how God gave me a scepter of justice. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. The throne is established in righteousness. New Living Translation, justice. So I'm given a scepter. I'm set apart with righteous intensity, with the intensity of justice. Okay? The king of kings, the king of justice, what have you. And I'm given a scepter at the same time. When I'm, when I'm elevated by my righteous acts, okay? They crowned my head and gave me a scepter of righteousness. When I'm elevated by the doing God justice to the point where I've served him better than anyone else possibly could, I'm given a crown that is the best crown and a scepter of justice that is the best scepter. I hope you understand that these things are true. There's no other way it could be. So it says, since... For since the message spoken through angels was binding and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. So how did God testify to it? Write down verse 4. For those who want to doubt my top martial arts challenge, right? Which is legal and peaceful. Verse 4 makes it clear. That's how God testified. God testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by the gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will, according to God's will. Not the will of the state or the military or corporations or wealthy families, the governing class, but according to God's will. And they're trying to, you know, rig the deck. They're sabotaging, trying to give their kids the upper hand using their trickle-down blood money, their neocolonial blood money, token minority blood money, what have you. There's no excuse for that. That's not God's will. That's the devil's movement, not God's. So God set me apart as the one who performed the wonder of being the top martial artist ever possible. When someone has proven, like I have, that he's the top martial artist ever possible, a lot of people are wondering how I achieve that, that the most desirable type of person, which is the top martial artist ever possible. The root and offspring of David, right? David facing Goliath in single combat, which in his perfect form is martial combat. It came to bring a sword, not a sling. So how did I achieve it? It's a sign that God set me apart. The Lord is a warrior. Exodus 15.3, uh, Psalm 89, God has anointed a warrior. 2 Samuel 5, the reason why, uh, uh, excuse me, the reason why David was anointed. It's a sign. It's a wonder. 
It's a miracle. My Ra cell, my God cell. Ra in Hebrew means evil, but they, woe who those who call evil good and good evil, is what it says in Isaiah, I believe it is. So in their language, they're calling good, evil, and evil good because Ra is symbolized by the sun, which in Psalm 19 is the symbol of God and the bridegroom. And in Psalms, it says the Lord thy God is the sun and shield. Okay? And when Joseph was given his wife by, the, uh, um, by Pharaoh, he was given Asana, the daughter of Potiphar, the high priest of Ra. That's the sun. That's God's cult center as symbolized by the sun. Okay, and that's part of why the Egyptians, you know, when Abraham and uh, Sarah came through, the Pharaoh said, hey, why didn't you tell me she's your wife? Because now God's going to, you know, curse Pharaoh because you didn't tell him that. And he tried to sleep with her and so on and so forth. He said, take her back because he believed in one God who was all good, all knowing, all powerful, just like the Jews did. And their word for it was raw. And the Jews word for it was something else. And the Muslims word for it, something else and so on and so forth. There's no other way to look at it. Okay. Jesus made fully human. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come, about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified, What is mankind that you are mindful of them? A son of man that you care for him. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. But we do see Jesus who was made... Um, okay, but we do see Jesus who was made alright, so they mess up here it says, but we do see Jesus who was made lower than the angels for a little while okay, in a sense perhaps but it's, it's wrong to say that okay um, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone in bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Again, another few me. And of course, again, I went over that in part one that, you know, that's, that's not helping them. It's just, they're just embarrassing themselves. I don't know why they're so immature. It's like people, who, you know, it, it, it's just immature. Okay. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. So I make people holy. There is no being holy without obeying God through me. So write that one down too. In case people think that they can magically be their own Christ, it's stupid. I'm the one who makes people holy. They don't make people holy. I make people holy. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. But I am the heir, not them. Okay? A lot of people are trying to twist that, and it's extremely disgraceful that they're trying to twist it. Extremely immature. Extremely pathetic. He says, I will declare your name to my brothers and sisters in the assembly. I will sing your praises, and again I will put my trust in him. And again he says, here am I and the children God has given me. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in the humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. So again, a lot of people twist this. They're supposed to pick up their cross, rally in the divine order, and accept being screened out. They're not given a free gift and a free pass to do whatever they want. Pick up your cross and follow me. Rally to me. Whoever doesn't gather with me scatters, right? Gather to me. The rallying point. God raises a sign, the banner, the covenant. That's me. The monarch and the ark of the covenant. A lot of movies confuse what the Ark of the Covenant is, but I'm right and they're wrong. Just like the Jews in the story were confused about what the temple is. Okay. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. Again, in John 8, you know, the children of Abraham are the ones who do God's work, right? Do what Abraham would do. Excuse me, in John 8, it says that. For this reason he has... He had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest, servant of, of God, and that he is, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. He is able to help those who are being tempted. Okay, we'll go over this in part two, what, what the explanation is here. It's a bit confusing. I'm out of time here.